Welcome back. Have we got an away game for you? There's an interesting trend in golf. Developers and architects are building spectacular courses that make us travel to the ends of the earth to play them. Now, our destination this time is out of the way, but it doesn't require crossing the date line or getting a number of stamps in your passport just to get there. We are heading to the Canadian province of Nova Scotia and Cape Breton Island. Now, Travel and Leisure magazine calls the Cape the third best island destination in the world. And there on the island's west coast is a golf course that is the equal of TNL's lofty ranking. Now there is an undeniable attraction to playing golf within the sight of the sea. And at the brand new Cabot Links course in Inverness, you are never out of the sight of the Northumberland shore. A Lynx is defined as being on ground linking dry land to the sea. Too many courses, though, are inaccurately called links, but Cabot more than qualifies. Take this splendid Rod Whitman design and place it on the north coast of Scotland, on the North Sea, and it's automatically in that country's top 10 places to play. But think about island courses on the Atlantic seaboard, Shinnecock, Sea Pines, name a place, and there's nothing that comes close to the Lynx experience at Cabot. What makes Cabot so good? As with all real estate, it begins with location, location, location. Folks had been eyeing this spot since the 1950s when the coal mines, which were the reason to live here, finally played out. High dunes separate the Gulf of St. Lawrence from the land on which they built a real seaside gem. The soil is sandy, so it drains well. Squalls will blow in, but you can still play just as in Ireland and Scotland. And for a course that opened in late July, I was pleasantly surprised at how lush the fairways and greens are. Now, a word about the lies. This is real Lynx golf, and fairway lies are always tight. Don't look for your ball to be almost teed up in the short grass. The fairways here are generous, and from the first couple of tees, you could be lulled into thinking Cabot is resort friendly. You know, pleasing to the eye, not all that hard to play. Don't be fooled. There are lots of blind shots, and position off the tee is vital. Miss the fairway and expect to pay. The fescue can be tall and gnarly. You have to take your medicine and pitch out. Plus, while there's no gorse, on the course, there are plenty of things into which a ball will disappear forever. Cabot is a walking only layout, and that's another reason why this place is special. No carts mean you need a caddy, certainly for the first time you play, and probably for each subsequent trip around. Just as on those UK links, caddies will both cost and pay. Shell out for the looper, and he'll show you where and where not to hit it, how it breaks, and perhaps most importantly, he'll take that lob wedge out of your hand. To play well here, you must use a ground game. Wind will blow tee shots all over the place and play havoc with approaches. Here, you'd better play the wind or bring lots of balls to replace the ones you lose. And when your caddy warns against that high approach shot, better listen. Punch your irons, hit bump and run shots from 100 yards in with firm and fast fairways and almost no collars guarding the greens. Pick out a line, hit it low and short, and watch it run to the target. And those targets are on the big side, lots at which to play. There's even a double green, a la St. Andrews. When we played, things were rolling relatively slow, not because the grass was long, that's just how it was. Next summer, when Cabot's greens are baked a bit, they will be scary. There's a lot of subtlety here, too. The big ups and downs are obvious, but there's a lot of side-to-side -side break a caddy's expert eye will help you see. Oh, and when it blows? better play the wind on the greens. You'd be surprised how much wind can influence a putt when it blows straight in off the water. It's easy to like Cabot for the big things, the breathtaking vistas and the quality of the routing. A third of the holes are directly adjacent to the beach, but what makes this course world class are the little things, like the bunkers. Instead of neatly carved and manicured, this Lynx goes for authenticity. It looks as if these hazards were hacked right out of the ground. No stacked sod in neat revetments just places to avoid. You'll need skill to get out, much less get up and down. Another small thing is the visual. From some tees, all you can see is the trouble. That's when you need to lean on your caddy. He'll tell you where there's room and probably more than you think. Like all great courses, Cabot gets in your head. It's supposed to. You have to be clever enough to say, hey, I've got that shot, and then execute. And oh, by the way, enjoy the scenery. It's as good as there is, and the sunsets are maybe the best I've ever seen on a golf course. And the folks at Cabot have already started on their second course. Cabot Cliffs, which is designed by Ben Crenshaw and Bill, Co Bill Corr, just about the hottest duo in golf architecture right now, it'll be ready in 2015. But if you need more inducement to come to Cape Breton right now, you don't have to wait till then. On the island's Atlantic coast is the Stanley Thompson treasure known as Highlands Lynx. 
It's been judged the best Canadian course almost since it opened back in 1939. Lynx Magazine has it as the 57th best course in the world. Now, if Cabot Lynx was playing firm and fast two weeks ago, when we were at the Highlands, it was like golf in a temperate rainforest. A soggy late summer left things still wet, but lush and verdant. Stanley Thompson's nickname is the Toronto Terror because his courses aren't just pleasing to the eye, they are damn hard. In that respect, the Highlands doesn't disappoint. You won't have a level eye, sometimes even on the tee. Greens are quick and undulating, and because they've been selectively harvesting the trees, they don't get in the way of too many of the breathtaking vistas. The Highlands is divided roughly into threes. It starts on the coast, climbs into the mountains, and eventually heads back through the hollows toward the Atlantic. At 66 bucks Canadian, the Highlands may be the best deal in world-class golf anywhere. But the real attraction on Cape Breton is the island itself. It is a place not to be missed, and the golf is as good as the place. Now, the season is effectively done this year, but my strong recommendation is plan a visit to the Cape next year. You can fly to Halifax, which is Nova Scotia's capital city, and there will be direct flights from National and Dulles in the warmer months. Inverness and Cabot, uh, about a three and a half hour drive from the airport of Halifax, and then the Highlands are another couple hours to the north end of the island and smack in the middle of a visually stunning national park. CabotLinks.com and HighlandsLinksGolf.com are great places to start. The website Golf Cape Breton gives a great overview. Up next, we'll cure any lingering jet lag in the grill room. Whitney Wilde joins us with a warning for long putter users and thoughts about why even bother touring after the Ryder Cup. We'll get to all that after you check out what's on the CGW calendar.